and gentlemen, please stand for the National Anthem of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Credit Union Prayer, also known as the Prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there's hatred, let me sow love. Where there's injury, pardon. Where there's doubt, faith. Where there's despair, hope. Where there's darkness, light. And where there's sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Congratulations, class of 2020. Welcome to the 54th graduation ceremony of the Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies. My name is Colin Bartholomew, Head of Department for Cooperative Studies at the Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies. Now, although unprecedented circumstances have brought us together in this virtual space, I am pleased to welcome each and every one of you who is watching this evening, who is streaming live this evening, and who has joined us for this momentous occasion. Graduates, I am honored to be presiding over this milestone in your life. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. We are proud to witness this step on your journey of success. Now graduation may look different this year, but we gather to celebrate your individual and collective accomplishments as the class of 2020. You have persevered, and today we celebrate your arrival to this ever-changing environment. To the family and friends joining us today, a special welcome. No one makes it to graduation alone. Thank you for supporting each and every graduate on their journey. Now, when we give cheerfully and accept gratefully, everyone is blessed. So, we have given and we accept and we count today as a blessing. Next up, we have the Chairman's Address, delivered by Dr. Hyacinth Guy, Chairman of the Board of Governors of the Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies since July 2019. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Guy to deliver her address. Thank you, Master of Ceremonies. The Honorable 
Stephen McClashey, Minister of Labor, members of the Board of Governors of the Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies, Dr. Andre Vincent Henry, Director of the College, faculty, staff, guild members, students, graduates, other specially invited guests, all our online attendees, ladies and gentlemen. A pleasant good day to you all and welcome to the Cipriani College. I am honored as the chair of the Board of Governors to address another group of graduates and our guests on this significant event in the life of the college. This year we are online because of the profound impact the pandemic has had on us all, our students, schools in general, and the entire country. Today, more than 350 students are included on our graduation list. You have all successfully completed the college's prescribed requirements for the bachelor, the associate, the certificate, and diploma programs. I congratulate you all on this achievement. This is even more significant when one considers that for the better part of 2020, you would have had a disruption to your normal way of operating. Yet here you are today, having achieved a goal. And I say a goal as I urge you to see this as one of the many academic goals you would achieve in your lifetime, hopefully here at the college. The college offers its students a unique opportunity. You come as you are, you come with what you have, and we will take you where you want to go. You have already demonstrated resilience and persistence. And oftentimes, these are the qualities that are required for success. The core of who we are is in labor studies and cooperative studies. But we have a suite of programs that complement and align with those programs. And we prepare you well for the world of work. Like everyone else, we have had to respond to the impact of COVID-19. Since being formed in 1966, the college has taught primarily through face-to-face -face interventions. But when the announcement came that schools were closed, we saw that as the incentive to reimagine learning, and we turned this into an opportunity to accelerate one of the goals that we had, which was to improve and increase our online offerings. And we did that. We had already piloted an online program called Introduction to Credit Union Management in May 2019. This had effectively launched our distance learning initiative and we used that experience to pivot into online education during the pandemic. We quickly adapted and implemented new learning methods to ensure continuity and we migrated our classes to an unlearn platform to transition our students and teachers. Of course, we did have the usual teething problems. We had to adapt to the new technology. Students had to balance their home life and their work life. And, they had to and we had to maintain the quality of the classes. But there were pluses. Our students liked the flexibility of working from home. And we see that this would be an ongoing feature of the college. So while COVID-19 did expose our weaknesses and threats to our sustainability, it also created accelerated changes in our operating environment, and it allowed us to see the significant opportunities and leverage our strengths as an institution to chip away at some of our weaknesses. We have had to revise the business model for the college and realign our structure. This continues to be a work in progress. We have had to accelerate the digitization of workplace processes. We have had to review how we will nurture and grow our in-house talent. And we have to leverage knowledge and information and re-engage our stakeholders. We also had to help our students. We had to offer flexible payment systems, flexible scheduling, staggered starts, so that we can ease the transition for students who may have to continue to balance work and family life. So it means ongoing engagement of our stakeholders and it also means establishing collaborative arrangements with other stakeholders, new stakeholders. For example, institutions who are of a like-minded philosophy and values and who see our programs as relevant to the national development goals and who will work with us for mutual benefit. 
we cannot overlook the fact that we have significant financial constraints. Some of our staff members have not had salary adjustments for several years, and the subvention is not nearly enough to cover our costs. We do what we can within our framework and mandate to meet our operational needs, but we are greatly challenged. We are certain, though, that we will not compromise our unique value proposition, and we will continue to provide the student experience that is distinctively Cipriani. I am happy to be here and to be part of this celebration, and I am honored to chair the board of governors of this important institution. We take seriously our responsibility to make a significant contribution to the development of our country. We support and we lift working people to realize their potential. Honorable Minister, thank you for your support. We are especially appreciative for your advocacy on behalf of the institution. I would like to thank the hardworking staff of the college. They rise repeatedly to our challenges in spite of their own sacrifices. As we look ahead, I assure you of my personal commitment and that of the Board of Governors to work hand in hand with you and our other stakeholders to ensure that Cipriani College does not only sustain itself, but that it thrives and grows. Graduands, I salute you. I applaud your determination and your successes. I said this to the graduating class last year, and I would like to say it again to you as I close. This may be the end of one program of learning for you, but see it as the beginning of your personal program of change. Become a torchbearer for the college, especially in the demonstration of your competencies learned and demonstrate these in your places of work. Graduands, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you and I wish you all success. Thank you, Dr. Guy. Your words of encouragement is really a solid platform to move the graduands into the next phase of their careers. Next, we will have the director's address, and this is delivered by our director, Dr. Andre Vincent Henry, the director of the Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Henry to deliver his address. Every year, one of my joys in this job is the honor to greet our graduates and to formally convert on them their certificates, diplomas, associate's degrees, and bachelor's degrees. One of the reasons I feel such a sense of pride in addressing CCLCS graduates is my deep admiration for you as a recognition of the many sacrifices that I know you would have gone through to get to this place. I am especially in awe of this graduating class. Your studies were appended by the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. In the space of two weeks, you moved from face-to-face -face learning to virtual learning. For those of you who continued into the first semester of the current academic year, you had the shortest of breaks and then went into the new semester in which you had to complete a 15-week semester in just 12 weeks. As I said, I'm in awe of you. Moreover, the vast majority of you are working people. You are adjusting to other stressors in your life, whether it was the anxiety about employment security, having to supervise the online education, 
of children who were now out of school, having to take care of a parent or other relative. Yet, you persisted. You stuck with it, and here you are. I'm in awe of you. My colleague, Dr. Sadek Kakan, the distinguished head of general education department, who is just one example of the excellent educators that we placed at your disposal, analyzed the stresses you faced and what you could have done to your commitment. Dr. Khan has pointed to actions that we must take to ensure that our students are better taken care of. So, in a real sense, you were pioneers and you were used as living lessons in what we must do. I know that we didn't get everything right. I'm not even sure that we got most right. But you must be assured that we did our best and we have learned many lessons. As you move to the next phase of your careers, I want you to be empowered by your accomplishments. I want you to realize that even as you have completed this chapter of your journey, you need to continue learning and developing yourself. Even if it is not formal education, there is an imperative for lifelong learning. Ensuring livelihood and professional satisfaction demands that each of you commits yourself to seeing the end of your Cipriani experience, not as an end of your education, but as one platform or pillar of your development. It is my sincere hope that as part of the Cipriani family, you will maintain contact with us. I hope you will consider joining the Alumni Association and that you will be an active and aggressive ambassador to other persons looking for opportunities to improve themselves in an environment that is caring. The college, like the working class in this country, stands on the shoulders and struggles and sacrifices of the well-known and celebrated, as well as the shoulders, struggles, and sacrifices of the forgotten. Those of us who have been given the mantle to wear the stewardship must embrace it for what it is. It can never be just a job. It is a calling. To those of you leaving us, I urge you to consider how you may pay forward a contribution to the progress of working people and to the national community by using your skills and knowledge acquired here and from your other experiences in the most constructive way possible. I also encourage you to identify how you can contribute to the growth and advancement of the college. I wish you Godspeed and look forward to learning how you continue to change in the world for the better. God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Henry. Your words of encouragement, particularly those of paying forward the contribution to the progress of working people, has landed well with this graduation. And we thank you for those encouraging words.
next we will have the commencement address. And this year, we are honored to have Senator the Honorable Stephen McClashey, Minister of Labor, who will deliver this commencement address. Join me in welcoming Senator the Honorable Stephen McClashey. Dr. Hyacinth Guy, Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Cipriani College of Labor and Corporate Studies. Members of the Board, Dr. Andre Henry, Director of the Cipriani College um, of Labor and Cooperative Studies. Faculty and staff, graduates, specially invited guests. I thank you for affording me this opportunity today to address the graduating class of 2020. I entered the Cipriani Labor College more than 40 years ago when this institution was still known as the Cipriani Labor College. At that time, the school was much different than it is today. In fact, we called it almost a cow shed at the time because it consisted of just two buildings, basically. It was not yet a tertiary educational institution as it fell into the category of technical and vocational training. Even then, Cipriani Labor College was filling a vital role in the educational landscape of Trinidad and Tobago. The father of our nation, Dr. the Right Honorable Eric Williams, led the charge to establish the college as an institution that would give workers and their representatives the opportunity for quality education that would allow them to better contribute more fully to the development of the newly independent Trinidad and Tobago. Dr. Williams had the vision to recognize the importance of education and the commitment to provide the structure and resources to make it happen. I would like to think that the history of the college is a good reflection of the course of our nation as we arrive and strive to develop ourselves into the new millennium. Cipriani College has grown from those humble beginnings to an institution that is well respected in the wider Caribbean and beyond. The institution has produced the last three ministers of labor, countless leaders in the labor movement and the cooperative movement, a good majority of the occupational safety and health professionals. I am proud to count myself as an alumnus of the Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies. I am always pleased to tell people of the significant contribution that the institution has made to my own development. Indeed, I say without reservation that it was the most significant development experience in my professional journey. It laid the foundation for me to move on to tertiary education and to become what I am today. Ralph Waldo Emerson, celebrated American poet, wrote, to be yourself in a world that is consistently trying to make you something else is the greatest accomplishment one can achieve. As an individual, you embrace the opportunity to pursue, ed to pursue tertiary education. Many others have not had the opportunity, and some had the opportunity but did not seize it. As individuals, you know the challenges that you have faced and overcome in this graduating class. For many of you, the path to this commencement has not been easy, especially during the period where the world is battling a pandemic. This last year was unprecedented in so many ways. The fact that you were able to weather those storms and you were able to adjust to the new normal, new ways of learning is a credit to you and the resilience that cannot be underestimated. As you pursue your roadmap and now 
you are celebrating your accomplishments and you have reached a crossroad, that means something. No matter how hard it seemed, no matter how difficult it became, no matter how fatigued your eyes were and your ears became from watching your lecturers through the virtual platform, no matter how crazy your work-life balance became during this time, you didn't give up. Your determination, your creativity, your individuality made you push through to get to this moment. Though and through your own personal challenges, the global challenges and the global challenges of the coronavirus pandemic, you have still been able to rise above it and you have persevered to be the best during these times. Be grateful and be proud of your individuality. Revel in this accomplishment and make sure that you say thank you to your friend, families, loved ones, and lecturers who have supported you throughout this phase of your journey. You would not be here without them. Celebrate them. Tell them thank you. Hug them. You would not have gotten to this place without them. You have forged ahead. Your individuality has shaped how you acted and reacted and how you will enact things in times to come. Many of us are afraid of our individuality, afraid of our unique characteristics, afraid of sometimes being different. However, as a legendary poet, Maya Angelou said, if you are always trying to be normal, you will never know how amazing you can be. History is replete with people who were not comfortable in their individuality. Martin Luther King, Mahatma Gandhi, Eric Williams, but to name a few. There are many, many defining moments in history that may not have been accomplished had people not shown their individuality. One such person is our own Arthur Andrew Cipriani, a force within the Caribbean labor movement who came at a crossroads where he could either be a veterinarian or a soldier. He chose to be a soldier instead. From there, that experience propelled him to be a leader of the working class within the Caribbean. In fact, Cipriani's determination and encouragement to workers to withhold labor due to unfavorable working conditions resulted in the first industrial strike in Trinidad and Tobago. Through this opportunity, Cipriani went also, through this opportunity, Cipriani also went on to form the first trade union and held the office of mayor of Port of Spain and on the legislative council. In his position, he was able to champion major issues such as minimum wage, women rights, workers' compensation, old age pensions, representative government, and legalization of trade unions. Had he chosen to be a veterinarian, not chosen to follow his individualistic path, stroke passion, to be a pioneer within the labor movement, how would workers' rights in the Caribbean have been shaped? His individuality shaped our world, our labor movement, and indeed in Trinidad and Tobago and across the wider Caribbean. When we look at one of our musical item, icons, the late Sandra Devine's Millington, better known as Singing Sandra, and I had the opportunity a couple of weeks ago to speak to her in person in that she called me on another matter that she wanted some clarity on. And we had a conversation for about half an hour. And it's interesting that when I read her bio in terms of where she started, 
And the fact that she dropped out of school so she could eat her food and support her parents while yet being involved in the best village and dance and so on, she was offered an opportunity by a Calypsonian to sing two songs which she embraced wholeheartedly. She took it up for the moment because she was not doing anything else. However, after that performance, that was the impetus for her to recognize that she could use that art form as a major form of expression and decided to pursue it further. Although Calypso was male dominated during those times, that did not stop her. In fact, singing Sandra went on to become a two-time Calypso monarch. Her abilities and her strength in performing the art form would always be remembered. Without singing Sandra, we would not have voices of the ghetto, songs of healing, die with my dignity. If she did not grasp that opportunity when it was given and decided to follow her heart and her mind, then she would not have excelled or become an icon that she is today. As individuals, you have purposed in your heart and you continue to shape the world as best you can. You could be the next pioneer of your field no matter where you are based, whether in labor, corporative studies, human resource management, occupational safety and health, project management, or security administration, and emergency management. The sacrifices that you made, the paths you have taken, have shaped you and challenged you. I question you. Have you been shaped for better or worse having attended Cipriani Labor College? Or as some would say, and cooperative studies. <laughs> have the challenge made you better or worse? How are you using your newfound individuality and passion to shape the world in your image and in your likeness? Remember, you have the potential to shape, to shape the world as you are. There is no one like you. So take advantage of that. Challenge yourself to create an even better legacy than you have already accomplished. This is not the end, but a start. You have received accolades and degrees and diplomas that would allow you to enter the doorway. It does not guarantee that you will have success. What I have, however, is people who are comfortable in their skin and have passion go on to become and do great things. Follow your passion, follow your heart. Do not follow the money. Do not follow what you think is what others want you to do. Follow what your heart tells you to do. Follow your passion. And in following your passion, you will change the world. I ask you and I challenge you to do just that, change the world. Once again, congratulations. Class of 2020, all the best in your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you, Minister McClashey, for that commencement address. It really propels the graduates into the working arena. So at this point, we move on to the presentation of candidates, which will be handled by Mr. Sheldon Salino, Deputy Director of Academic Affairs. Director Dr. Andre Vincent Henry, it gives me great pleasure to present to you today 373 candidates who are eligible for degrees from Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies. According to records submitted to me, each of these candidates has successfully completed one of the prescribed programs of study. 
By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Governors, I now confer the stipulated certificates, diplomas and degrees on the successful candidates. I am pleased to present to you the graduates of the college's certificate, diploma, associate and bachelor levels of study. The following individuals are the graduates of the Certificate in Accounting Procedure and Practice. Francis Brown, Candice Kashi, Zafelicia Claxton, Candice Hills, Cresha McLeod, Judy Rajman. The following individuals are the graduates of the Certificate in Credit Union Management. Bernadette Carter, Patrice Cooper, Samantha Cupid, Clifton Edwards, Christine Garcia, Chantel Hamilton, Sophia Jimenez, Collis Holder Craig, Andrea Joseph Greenwich, Tashura Lafond, Tadisha Nicholas, Eliza Noel, Natasia Phillips, Shirley Sales Felix. The following individuals are the graduates of the Certificate in Fraud Detection and Prevention. Josanna Allen, Mark Anthony Ian, Shelley Charles Williams, Carlisle Gaskin, Cassian George, Irwin Harris, Kevian Pato, Elizabeth Spence, Jacqueline Taylor Chase. The following individuals are the graduates of the Certificate in Human Resource Management. Michelle Allen, Anastasia Batiste, Jamila Jocelyn, Emma Kemraj, Arlene Loghead Alexander, Nadia Mano, Shalima Mohammed, Ashmisha Ramsamuj, Celine Reyes, Giselle Skeet, Renasa Stewart, Deborah Wilkes. The following individuals are the graduates of the Certificate in Industrial Relations. Penelope Bob Barclay. Nicole Balkaran, Dale Baliram, Christopher Conniet, Corice Cox, Khadija Flanders, Sharice Garcia Singh. Terry Hills Young, Anna Posad, Tanil Phillip, 
Rinaldo Rambin, Antia Smith, Charmaine Theodore, and Sumintra Tulsi. The following individuals are the graduates of the Certificate in Occupational Safety and Health. Andrew Alexander, Sherilana Antoine, Akila Bash, Nalini Bissessa Webb, Joseph Brito, Anisha Carrington, Michelle Dindial, Hakeem Fleming, Nathaniel Fraser, Cassie Jofiel Herbert, Sheila Jones, Abby Joseph, Debbie King Daniel, Daniel Lawrence, Yasmin Leon, Michelle Lewis, Shondell Macmillan, Alia Matura, Alicia Mejias, Amaya Millington, Mirusi Mitchell, Leah Pereira, Darian Ragunanan, Lisa Rampasad, Raphael Sharp, Sherian Tudo, Tamara White, Sean Williams. The following individuals are the graduates of the Certificate in Occupational Safety and Health for General Industry. Gwyneth Goodrich. Makil Hoggins. Sharon Hunt. Mark Zephyrin. The following individuals are the graduates of the Certificate in Project Management. Vanessa Bastardo, Petal Bridgewater, Jafia Dissous, Tisara Patwa, Lafisha Phillips, Jade Tan. The following individuals are the graduates of the Certificate in Security, Administration and Management. Joel Dimas. Devendra Jitan. Isasha Moket. Arlene Moses Rampasad. Dion Paul. The following individuals are the graduates of the Diploma in Emergency Management. Trisha Alexander, Christopher Ali Najiu, Michelle Bell, Sheldon Jones, Regina Mahabir, Marsha Ramchan, Andre Telesford, and Charlene Williams Joseph. 
The following individuals are the graduates of the Diploma in Human Resource Management. Onella Huggins. Rosalind Kisun. Marvin Lee. Hyacinth Ramsarup Ribeiro. Ariana Smith. The following individuals are the graduates of the Diploma in Industrial Relations Practice. Prince Karu, Kyle Davis, Akila Davis Murray, DL Juke, Sharice Garcia Singh. At Kim Hamilton, Emleta Adio, Altonese Henry, Regina Joseph, Gabriel Joseph, Mark Lee, Peaches Mahabir. Nakima Matthews, Trisha Moore, Peter Morris, Panisa Parag, Ria Perez Duran, Cusson Phillips, Lauren Pierre, Miguel Pierre, Eden Pope, Krista Rameshwar, Risa Ramlogan Juda, Tanil Richardson Hagley, Marlene Roberts, Arnaldo Russell, Maisha Seely, Giselle Seabrat, Sonia Sicharan Ram Raphael, Riviana Sunarine, Kaisha Surju, Sumintra Tulsi, Gerard Uleri. Gamala Warner, Kuhn Young. The following individuals are the graduates of the Diploma in Occupational Safety and Health. Lisa Ali Khan, Katian Bernard Wilson, Ornella Charles. Brian Dulan, Shanice Edmond, Mawasi Felix, Heather Forster, Megan George, Amika Gray. Janelle Guy, Denil Harper, Clifton Isaacs, Esther James, Robert Joseph, Anthony Jules, Vion McPherson, Raquel Mills, Leanne Noalo, Derek Olivier, Benjamin Pasutan, 
Charlene Ragoba, Sineta Ramdas, Michael Richards, Chavez Smart, Miguel Stewart, Carol Valdez, Nigel Williams Bailey, and Kim Yearwood. The following individuals are the graduates of the Diploma in Project Management. Aaron Allen. Miles Andrews, Antonio Armstrong, Nikita Bengochi, Robin Greenwich, Renata Eiffel, and Nicola Lezama Manet. The following individuals are the graduates of the Diploma in Public Relations. Nikita Joseph, Dev Maharaj, Samantha Toussaint. The following individuals are the graduates of the Diploma in Security Administration and Management. Ricardo Andrews. Alicia Atherton Francis, Charles Batiste, Angelina Batu, Perry Biznat Singh, George Book, Dave Burnett, Leah Byron, Amy Calderon, Donna Chase, Junil Kumansing, Alvon Dallas, Ronald DeFritas, Sheen Emret, Gerard Ferguson, Iran Jagasa, Johannes Joseph, Jamar Ubermola, Uman Ramjag, Ravi Rampasad, Butran Ramsumi, Andrew Rango, Lawrence Ravello, Darren Rupansing, Karen Samuel, Mukish Sukram, Sarah, Sarah Lee Sudan, Kevin Walcott. The following individuals are the graduates of the Technical Diploma in Operational Management. Maurice Alexander. Mazana Ali. Sunita Bechu Das. Shiva Bishram. Derek Boren. Eldon Coker, Sharon Hines, Janelle Legaton, Sharon Maraj Daharam, Cyril Mihias, Katrin Mendez, Chad Olivier, Deina Parks, 
Annalise Phillips, Arlene Ramdio, Jalen Rupnarain, Nicole Samson, Michael Simpson, Felicia Sukai, and Vivian Villarelle. Elizabeth Wharton. The following individuals are the graduates of the Associate of Arts degree in Cooperative Studies. Wayne Charles. Vanessa Lewis. The following individuals are the graduates of the Associate of Arts degree in Human Resource Management. Alina Bihari. Alana Bennett. Kelly Byron, Janelle Grant, Alison Mendoza, Malini Oliver, Rishma Rabiu, Kiwana Roberts, Ashaki Siru. Chanel Solomon, Sheena Stevens, Theresia Stewart, Dia Thomas. The following individuals are the graduates of the Associate of Arts degree in Labor Studies. Janice Eastman, Cabrina Morris Jack, Victoria Susanka. The following individuals are the graduates of the Associate of Science degree in Environmental Management. Chimika Fortune, Richard McMill. The following individuals are the graduates of the Associate of Science degree in Occupational Safety and Health. Elena Alvarez, Sonic Hector, Raymond Ironside, Andel Jagu, Dwayne Jones, Maud Joseph Moore, Christiana Kisun, Amanda Llewellyn, Tenille Lynch, Andre Maraj, Devon Maxwell, Eve Morell, Deline Noel, Noella Pierre, Do Jordan Ramu, Shinaqua Richardson, Tristan Rodney, Jacqueline Rolox Gordon, Benedict Salazar. Dees Simon, Richard Soons, Cluan Williams, Risa Williams, Manika Wilson. The following individuals are the graduates of the Associate of Science degree in Project Management. Tishon Marshall, Adrian Phillips, Tonya Prince. 
The following individuals are the graduates of the Associates of Science degree in Security Administration and Management. Jared Bushell. Cheryl Karu Devonish. Larry David. Morris Duncan. Karen Flavani, Gart Griffith, Heidi Miller Marchan, Charles Suklal Singh Jr., Kimberly Wong. The following individuals are the graduates of the Bachelor of Arts degree in Corporate Studies. Dennis Dopraj, Ayana Grazet Bailey, Juzan John, Melissa Laguerre, Karen Rollins. The following individuals are the graduates of the Bachelor of Arts degree in Human Resource Management. Winston Adams, Abigail Ali Collins, Keisha Barasa, Kevon Beatrice, Drusilla Keaton Jarvis, Diana Graham, Paul Gurin. Crystal James, Marlon James, Tisha Jeffrey, Avonel Joseph, Melissa Mapp, Giselle Mendoza, Michelle Phillips, Marisha Ramdani, Latoya Ransom Peters, David Smith, Altia Waldron, June Wellington Egard. The following individuals are the graduates of the Bachelor of Arts degree in Labor Studies. Stephen Ambrose, Giselle Jordan Young, Ayana Noel. The following individuals are the graduates of the Bachelor of Science degree in Occupational Safety, Health and the Environment. Siobhan Alexis. Janelle Angelo, Brandon Babulal, Alexander Bacchus, Marsha Bahadu, Deandra Brown, Karen May Brown Nichols, Kinder Charles, April Davis, Cassandra Dillon, Natalia Ford, Shanice George, Andy Gulcharan, Sharon Giuseppe, Leah Isaacs, Shelian Jaglal, Trisha Jobent, Kanisha Ku, Tariq Khan, 
Rupnarain Mahis, Petra Marcel, Geneve Mills, Abraham Morris, Jadija Philip, Kimberly Pinder, Ingerfield Prentice, Kalisa Ramchari Tau, Amelia Ramkilawan, Shivanan Ramnanan, Ludwin Ramsdeen, Rachel Riley, Anita Rukchan, Elizabeth Ross, Karina Surju, Kadisha Teasdale, Wendy Walker Mayo, Ra Watson, Ken Wellington. The following individuals are the graduates of the Bachelor of Science degree in Project Management. Cindy Ambrose. Gregory Groni. Jason Mahabir. Hansraj Suku. The following individuals are the graduates of the Bachelor of Science degree in Security Administration and Management. Anissa Ali. Dexter Augustine. Randy Farrell. Ricardo Ferrier. Hossein Fivek, Fritz Forrester, Ansel Henry, Sylvan Lightborn, Dwayne Morgan, Crystal Moses, Adish Ragbir, Valmiki Ramjatan, Nicholas Ramlal, Kurt Rumani, Dean Sukomani, Avian Tanis, Steed Thomas. Sherian Tudor. Congratulations.
Next, we will have the presentation by the valedictorian, who is none other than Ms. Siobhan Alexis, who has successfully read for the bachelor's degree in occupational safety, health, and the environment. Please, a warm welcome for Ms. Siobhan Alexis, your valedictorian for 2020. The Honorable Stephen McClashey, Minister of Labor. Dr. Harrison Guy, Chairman of the Board of Governors and members of the board. Dr. Andre Vincent Henry, Director of the Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies. Faculty, family, friends, and fellow graduates, good afternoon. Let me express how honored I am to be presenting the valedictory speech as valedictorian for the class of 2020. When I first saw this achievement in the Cipriani Student Handbook, I told myself, Siobhan, despite not having a background in science, and in spite of the fact that you have been out of school for seven years, you are going to work hard to achieve this goal. Although it seemed far-fetched at the time, here I stand today. During the middle of my first semester at Cipriani, I met someone in my critical thinking class. I know, right? Critical thinking in my first semester. This is where it all began. We both had different strengths and weaknesses, and we decided that we would work together to ensure our success. Distractions at home forced us to meet in empty classrooms whenever we could. When it got close to exams, we would sometimes apply for vacation from work in order to study. Those times of study ran into 12-hour shifts where we practiced past papers and revised content. This went on semester after semester, and many times we were the only two students present, along with security guards on the college premises. Although those times of study came with challenges, I was willing to make the sacrifice because this is exactly what I wanted to do at this point in my life. In my teenage years, I had, I had attended another university. In hindsight, it was clear that I was underprepared for, the study, for study at this level. I settled for simply passing an exam with common sense, to which I did. But things didn't quite work out at that place. However, as an immature adult, I decided to challenge myself. With this resolve, I made no excuses. Many times, I would come home exhausted after working a hectic shift, barely having time to shower and make it back to Cipriani from Diego Martin to attend three consecutive classes. It was also difficult to schedule school around my job as I worked in the aviation industry. However, I was adamant I had to do this. I was facing some personal challenges in my life at the time, and I vividly remember having a class with a lecturer who communicated out of concern that I had not done well in an assessment she had given the week prior. It wasn't that I had done the worst in that exam, but having done a class with her before, she knew my potential. The lecturer's concern motivated me and will forever be etched in my mind. Those words of care and concern made me resilient, strengthened my, strengthened my resolve to do better. I say this to say, although we may face adversities, failures, and disappointments throughout life, we must never give up. Personally, I'm inspired by all my classmates who have overcome so much to be graduating with me today. You have been a determined group and you have demonstrated great endurance in the face of setbacks. It's not about where we start, but where we finish, and finish we have. At this point, I would like to express my gratitude by saying thanks to all the lecturers who went above and beyond the call to ensure our success. Today, we honor you for making the choice to be educators par excellence. As students, we were inspired by your competence. You challenged us to critically analyze knowledge transfer. Fellow graduates, 
I want you to know what a great gift we have received. By way of preparation from this college, the Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies, we are now more than adequately prepared for life beyond these portals and sufficiently equipped for the workplace. I venture to say that the Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies stands out as an institution that inspires and encourages. For we have received the best way of coping skills, knowledge empowerment, and academic excellence. Thank you to the administrative staff who always courteous and gave us the information we needed to proceed. Thank you to the security guards who constantly checked on us to make sure we were okay when studying alone at night. I thank you all. In addition, we must be thankful for each other. The friendships we made here would last for a lifetime. In the same way we have supported each other in group assignments, may we continue to provide support and encouragement wherever we go. Friends, fellow graduates, when we leave this virtual encounter today, let us celebrate what we have accomplished. But let us be forward looking with a commitment to applying our professional knowledge to make Trinidad and Tobago a better society for all students. One last. Congratulations, class of 2020. We persevered and we achieved. I thank you. Thank you, Miss Alexis, for those words. Clearly, Cipriani has done a great job at shaping you into a product ready for the environment and the world ahead. So, we have come to the end of this, the 54th graduation ceremony of the Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies. And we thank each and every one of you for joining us to the graduates. Congratulations to the graduating class of 2020. You have made it. And of course, we must thank those who have addressed you during this evening ceremony. First, we begin with the Honorable Stephen McClashy, Minister of Labor. We thank you, sir. Your words of encouragement and your support for this institution does not go unnoticed. We thank you for presenting the college as a pillar of opportunity and success in the lives of the most vulnerable and the working class in our society. Thank you, sir. To our chairman of the Board of Governors, Dr. Hyacinth Guy, we thank you for your address. Surely, these graduates have additional tools to go forth into this unstable but promising environment ahead. Thank you, Chairman Dr. Hyacinth Guy. To the other members of the Board of Governors, by your collective presence and support for policy and other initiatives, we are celebrating this graduation ceremony and we have put forth a graduating class of 2020. We thank you. To our director, Dr. Andre Vincent Henry. Dr. Henry, you continue to pick up the mantle and move the ship forward. The graduates of this class of 2020 and all who support them truly appreciate your words of encouragement. And even as you spoke to moving into the working environment and making a difference, we believe that a powerful seed has been planted and we will reap from the collective harvest in the near future. 
Thank you, Dr. Henry. To the faculty and staff of the Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies, your work truly moves this organ forward as one body. It would be remiss if we did not acknowledge all your efforts, all of your hard work, and your commitment to the organization. We thank you very much. To other specially invited guests in this virtual space, yes, your presence here has really made a difference and really elevated the profile of this momentous occasion. And of course, last but not least, the graduates of the class of 2020. A dream does not become a reality through magic. It takes sweat, it takes determination, it takes hard work. You have worked hard and you have accomplished your dream. Congratulations to you and we thank you for allowing us to be a part of this occasion in your journey. Continue to dream. And as the chairman said in her address, continue to be the torch bearers for this institution. We look forward to all success and we thank each and every one of you for joining us here this evening. Thank you. Thank you.